Hello Mulees, welcome back to my channel Mulesoft Tech Zone. So this is the second session for Mulesoft training for advanced users. So you might have seen we have discussed about POM.xml in the first session. So second topic here that we are going to discuss is about creating, importing, exporting a Mulesoft project. This is not really that tough to understand but it is necessary to understand and explore the different options that we have while we are creating a project or importing a project or exporting a project so let's see it would be very quick i will show you a, a kind of you know demo as well how to do this and uh, make sure that you know you must be knowing that it's very simple but sometimes there are some options that we usually don't explore right so it's always better to see different options in any point studio and you can try to work on that so coming to the first part how to create a mulesoft project in the mulesoft for absolute beginner session i have shown you like just going to any point studio create and click on new mule project so that is the same thing that we do now but let's see what additionally i'll be explaining over here so definitely we have to create a project in any point studio and choose the appropriate runtime version before you know creating any mule project always when you download the latest any point studio it comes with the latest mule runtime version however if you want to uh, uh, if you want to work out on the previous versions of mule runtime you need to install the software before you create any new project and the third point here is add an api implementation to your project to automatically set up a api kit router and the placeholder force flows for each resource method remember when we are doing this scaffolding of a raml automatically few flows are generated so you will be seeing api kit router which is called as main flow and api kit console and the different private flows that we that it generates from the uh, uh, resource that we design in the raml so i am not going to discuss anything about raml here but i am just saying how the flows are generated so we have three options for this if you want to generate flows okay if you don't want to generate any flows you can just click on new mule project and click on finish but if at all you need to import any raml into your project and scaffold the flows generate some flows then there are three options the first option is you can download raml from the design center that means we are connecting our anypoint studio to the design center and uh, the second option is you can import the raml from local file for example if you have a raml file on your local you can just import that local file into your uh, you know any uh, while we are creating a project in any point studio and the third one is import a published api if at all you need to import your api as an asset or something like that uh, usually this published apis will be there in exchange we can connect to exchange and then clone it so before going to the next slide let's see if we can create all these options so coming back to any point studio so i am clicking on file new mule project okay so here are the three options that we are discussing right so first let's give a project name like um mule soft text zone right here you can see the runtime version so i have downloaded this anypoint studio with the latest version and i can see only 4.4.0 enterprise edition in case if you want to work on 4.3 version always you can click on install runtimes and then you know you can uh, choose particular runtime and install it so that it will appear so you can install more than one runtime over here and choose whatever runtime you want because if you're working again when it comes to importing of a project right uh, when you're working on the existing projects which has runtime of 4.3.0 version and there can be dependency issues and all stuff so in that case you have to install 4.3.0 as well now the next option that you can see here is api implementation by default there is a check mark here it is saying that scaffold flows from this api specifications so we have three different options one is import a published api next import raml from the local file and download raml from the design center so i'm not going to use like import pub uh, import a published api because i want those raml files uh, these are one and the same okay so now what i will do is i'll click on this browse option it will try to 
connect to so i have already logged into my you know and uh, any point platform account if you don't have an any point if you are not logged into any point platform account you can click on add account and just enter your credentials all right if you are using like you know your company's organization credentials please make sure that click on configure and use external identity that is your organization domain as this is my personal any point platform account so i am going to choose this option okay now that i am already logged in i have few different uh, rammels designed already so let me just take order details which is already present and click on okay okay so when you click on okay you can see there is a warning over here it is saying that you won't be able to stay in sync between studio and design center you can only manage your raml files locally that means you have your raml which is there in design center and now you are importing it into your any point studio and there is a chance that you can edit your raml changes in any point studio as well but what they are trying to say is whatever changes you are doing locally in the any point studio it cannot be synced with the design center so there if you are doing some change for example you are changing a type from number to string on local make sure that you have to manually change again in the uh, design center because it is not synced all right so now that uh, so it is saying like you are importing the following apis and uh, yes just click finish you can see a new project is created by scaffolding the flows you will be seeing different flows that are generated one would be the main flow the another would be the api kit console and how many resources are present when i say resources it will be like total number of methods present we will be saying those many private flows let's give it a time so you can see that api kit router flow with the listener and all the so basic structure has been generated with error handling and all stuff so this is main flow with error handling then api kit console with error handling and i think i have only two uh, resources get order details and create order details and two flow structure this is one method of generating the uh, generating a project create or creating a new project if you don't want to create uh, you know if you don't want to scaffold uh, the flows at the initial process itself what you can do is you can create uh, mt2 for example let me create a new project without any kind of you know and if you don't want to scaffold the flows means if you don't want to generate the flows you can always uncheck the option but there is a reason why we are importing designs you know raml from the design center so we always do check this option the second option would be like create a new project without create you know without uh, importing any raml and the other way to uh, you know import the raml is right clicking on the project so let me go to mt2 project over here so mt2 here you can see there is no flows or you know no no uh, xml files that are generated what i can do is right click on mt2 So here, so here, new and what you can do is you can go to any point platform over here this option and here there is an option to download download raml from design center when you click the option again it will show the same thing and choose your order details click on ok and it is asking all current files in source main resources api folder will be re replaced of course there is no api folder but it is giving just a warning that if you have existing api folder it says it will be replacing it right and you can click yes and now these flows are generated so these are the two ways that you can you know usually import the raml from design center and generate the flows and the other thing that i was discussing about you source uh, source main resources you can see api folder is generated I, I was telling you that if any change on local you can you can change the details right for example the message you 
instead of details fetched you can say product details fetched you are making a change that is fine it will be published to you know code uh, it will be published to github and it will be deployed but if you want this thing in sync with design center no it will not sync from any point studio to design center you have to go to your design center from any point platform and make the same change there so always good suggestion is do not make any kind of changes locally in any point studio always go ahead and change your changes in design center and then import the raml into your any point st studio that's the best way so these are the things where uh, you know how you can uh, basically create a new mule project is nothing greek and latin over here what is the second one importing a mule project so there are three different type there are many types actually of uh, where you can import a mule project but uh, out of them i am selecting only few for uh, you know this session because these are the most uh, common ways where someone imports a mule project one is importing from any point studio the other one is importing from github okay and uh, in when importing from any point studio there are three different things like any point project from file system api specification from design center and packaged mule job let us go through go to any point studio and see what we can do so file click on import option you can see various options you can see general any point studio everything right but i am go most of them will be using only two options any point studio and github so let me quickly go through what is git right so there is a plugin already installed in any point studio where you can select github and if you have a local repository that's fine you can choose that but if you want if you are using you know your organization uh, github you can click on clone URI. you can mention all these details like uri host protocol username and password and you can just you know uh, click on next and finish it your project will be imported successfully right so this is one of the methods which i usually don't use i will i always love to use git bash or git ui to you know uh, clone locally so the other thing is the common thing which we all use is if if a project is already present and is extracted not the zip file but if it is extracted you have to always choose the option any point studio from file system click on next okay go to here and if you have any project i am not sure if i have one project already but uh, what you can do is any project that you have uh, can be uh, you know which is like already unzipped you have to choose this option so this is one option but if you want to import a jar file right you download a jar file or someone has exported as a jar file and you want to make use of that jar file you have to always use this this option but there is a small thing can we import all jar files that is a question that i will be explaining uh, in the later part of the video and the other third option is api specification from design center if you go on next if you you can go to exchange if your application is already present and you can download it and import for example there is like auto details here click on finish you can import this from design center so this is these are the three different ways but i was telling you about uh, importing a project if you have a jar file is it easy to import yes but only thing we have to make sure that how that particular jar has been exported so you have to make sure that before importing this how this jar file might be imported um, so yeah it is saying like if you want to change the design perspective i will say yes right so this is how it looks so you can see your raml file so this looks more like a design center on your local so here also in this way you can basically basically i am like it this project is all about the design center can you see here so it looks like this exchange JSON and all this stuff and you know all this kind of stuff so you can make any changes here and you can push the code changes all to the um, any point platform this is one way now the other thing which I am talking about is packaged mule application jar file so like to discuss more about this we have to discuss about the importing of uh, exporting of a mule project so exporting from any point studio okay so any point studio project 
so this you can use uh, you know you can export a project as a mule deployable archive when i say you when i use this word mule deployable archive that means it will be it is able to deploy this particular jar in any point studio okay and you must keep this attach project source option selected to be able to import the package jar file back into the studio this is what i am talking about if at all if you are unchecking this option attach project resource what will happen is it will export as a jar file yes fine but we cannot re-import this particular uh, you know jar file into any point studio because we are not attaching any project sources so in our previous slide if you go back to our previous slide in case you need to use this third option packaged mule application dot jar file you have to make sure that this particular dot jar file has been exported along with attached dot project resources so this is also i guess one of the uh, certification questions that we uh, have i believe so make sure that you are doing this part so coming to the next part if you are deselecting this include project modules and dependencies option what will happen there is an option i will show you if you are deselecting this include project modules and dependency what will happen is this skips the building the actual modules and external dependencies required to run the mule application so what it will do it will create a lightweight jar file package that does not include any dependencies in the form that are present in the form.xml because when you are when you are selecting this option like include project modules and dependency you can see the size of jar file will be in mbs usually like 20 mb 30 mb 60 mb or 100 mb of course it should not cross 200 mb but it will be like tightly packed but when you are deselecting this option it will not actually try to bundle the actual modules that will help in producing the size of the jar file that's why we are calling it as lightweight jar file package okay and what will happen this generated jar file is not a functional deployable archive and cannot be deployed to mule runtime engine when it is not necessary to deploy when it is of no use to deploy in a runtime manager then why we are exporting so the only reason why we are doing this lightweight why we are going with lightweight option is this offers a way to archive only the source file and you know it is easy to transfer it to you you know for suppose you want to share this jar file to one of your colleague to import it in his uh, you know any point studio so you can see this option when you import this lightweight package into your studio all your dependencies are automatically downloaded but again this lightweight package is not a deployable jar file that you can deploy into runtime manager this is very important lightweight package is only to import into any point studio so that you know it will start generating the depend uh, downloading your dependency and automatically download okay so if you go to any point studio again and uh, go to file export and click on uh, this option like any point mule any point studio project to deployable archive go to next and choose the project you want to export and this is what i am talking uh, talking about if you are attaching so if you click on the you know uncheck this include project modules and dependencies then it will be a lightweight package that will be generated but it is not able to deploy to a runtime manager so if you want to deploy into runtime manager then you have to check this option all right and attach project resource is what we are talking about so if you go back to the first slide you must keep this attach project resource option selected to be able to import the project jar file back okay that's what we are discussing so this has to be there okay attach project should should be there to re-import this particular jar file so this is all about uh, creating importing and exporting a mule project so topic two is all about this i know these are small things but still if you explore these options you will get to know more and maybe one or two questions can come in the certification questions thank you and see you in the next session